Hey everybody, this is Pesho. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about the applications of income elasticity of demand. What we are going to do is we are going to look at the type of income elasticity of demand that different goods have and then we'll draw some conclusions about the effect on a growing economy and the effect on businesses when the economy is once again growing or even shrinking. So let's get started. And the first thing that we need to do is uh, kind of draw some conclusions about the kind of income elasticity of demand that different goods have. So we'll look at the three typical groups of products. We have the primary, the manufactured and the services. So primary goods, manufactured goods. And remember the manufactured goods were our secondary goods. And then we have the services, the tertiary goods, services. So what we normally observe is primary goods tend to have relatively low income elasticity of demand. So relatively low YED. Um, this is true to the fact that uh, most primary goods, we look at them uh, as a form of necessities. We need them in order to produce other products. So necessities, they, if you remember, they used to have um, uh, income elasticity of demand value between zero and one. Uh, some primary goods can also become inferior goods as the economy is growing and those would have income elasticity of demand less than uh, zero. Then we go to the manufactured goods and the manufactured goods, they, some of them can be necessities, some of them can be luxuries depending on the product. Uh, but generally we are going to observe a relatively higher value for income elasticity of demand. So we can say relatively higher YED. And like I said, it depends on the product. Something like a car can be a luxury good. Um, again, depending on the income of the individual and something like a uh, marker you know, that I used to write, this would be a necessity. Uh, I, I need it in order to, um, you know, recall my lessons. Finally, we get to the service sector and services tend to have even higher income elasticity of demand than um, manufactured goods. So this would be even higher YED. Most services would fall under the category of luxury goods. They would have value of income elasticity of demand greater than one. Of course, that does not mean that um, all services are luxuries. A service can be a necessity, for example, getting a haircut. For most people, that would be some kind of a necessity. Uh, but uh, in general terms, services would be considered luxuries. So these three uh, values or ranges, uh, take them as a general guidance. It's not something that's firmly set and all primary goods have low income elasticity of demand and then all services have the highest income elasticity of demand. But these are simply trends that match most goods. Now, what's interesting is what will happen to the uh, economy and its structure as it is growing over time. So this is what we are going to look next. Okay, in this hypothetical example, we are going to look at an economy in three different stages. Uh, stage one would be low development. So stage one. Then we'll have stage two, 
which will be a medium development economy. So you can think of a medium development economy as an economy with uh, middle income levels. So, medium development. And stage three would be a highly developed economy. So we have high level of development. Okay, let's go to our stage one. And uh, the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have a column chart of the three different sectors. So I have my agriculture, I have my manufacturing, and then I have my services. So what you usually will find at economies with low level of development is that they're mainly agricultural based. So we're going to have an agricultural sector like this. We may have a small manufacturing sector something like this. And then even a smaller service sector. And again, it's not that may not be always the case, but uh, this, this would be a general trend. Now, what happens as our economy grows, so it goes from stage one to stage two, is that every single sector will expand, but they will expand at different rates. The agricultural sector will expand at the slowest rate. The manufacturing sector will expand at uh, the middle rate and the service inspector will have the fastest increase. So in stage two, we're going to have a somewhat higher agriculture. Uh, we may have a manufacturing that now is kind of like matching or even out, outgrowing the um, agricultural sector. And then our services will begin to increase as well. So something like this. So this would be agriculture manufacturing and services. Notice that again, each sector is growing when compared to the original stage, but the rate at which they're growing is obviously different. Now, when we go to the third stage, our agriculture will once again grow, but again, at the slowest possible rate, simply because usually by stage two, we tend to have sufficient agricultural levels to feed ourselves. And this is generally the main objective of the agricultural sector, to provide enough food for the population of a country. So it may expand, but it will not expand by much. So again, we have agriculture, manufacturing, and then services. So this one will again become greater than it used to be, but uh, its in increment will be very small. Now the manufacturing sector will grow. But what we are going to observe now is that our service sector skyrockets. So this will be kind of like this. So even though the agriculture is growing through every individual stage, it's importance changes over time. While the agriculture at the early stages was the most important sector in our economy, by stage three, it is the least important sector. At the same time, the service sector, while it was the most, uh, well, the least important in stage one, by stage three, it outgrows both the manufacturing and agricultural sector and now is the most important sector, the sector that hires the most people, the sector that maybe generates the most uh, income, um, and generally it's the leading sector in the economy. Now, what does this imply for businesses? If the business is engaged in the production of agricultural products, what we are going to see is that in times of development, as we go from stage one to stage two to stage three, this business will expand slowly. If a business is engaged in manufacturing in times of development, this business will 
expand rapidly, especially around stage two. This will be the big increase in manufacturing. Now, if the business is engaged with services, we're going to see an expansion in stage two, but it will really skyrocket in stage three. So when the economy is growing, the firms which will probably benefit the most, again, in general terms, would be the ones in the service sector. Of course, there may be exceptions to this rule, but you know those are the general trends. However, what happens if an economy enters a recession? Well, what you're going to observe is that the agricultural sector would be the least affected, simply because, uh, especially over here, if the economy enters a recession, people still need to eat. So, you know, these, these are our necessities, the agricultural products, so people will continue to buy them. Even if some uh, agricultural products, they may be inferior goods, and then in times of recession, those, the demand for these inferior goods will increase. However, the manufactured goods in times of recession would be negatively affected. Uh, this sector that's engaging in manufacturing will probably suffer quite substantial losses. The sector that will suffer the most would be the service sector because uh, it is highly income elastic and as income declines then the decline in the demand for the services will be at a higher rate so again this is something to consider when uh, firms are investing and um, manufacturing and services firms will be able to benefit the most from a growing economy, but they will be also the most vulnerable when the economy shrinks. All right, guys, well, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so, it will help. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section. I'll try to answer to them. And uh, I hope to see you again. Take care.